Hi, Taylor T. Carlson, and back with another movie review. Today we're going to be looking at Kino Lorber's reissue of one of my personal favorite comedy films of all time, The Producers. This, of course, was the first feature-length film from Mel Brooks, originally released theatrically in 1968, starring Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder. This movie has been released on Blu-ray before. I believe it was Shout Factory that released the older disc, but now Kino Lorber's trying their hands at this one with a new 4K master. So we'll do a quick unboxing of this. I'll give a recap of the film, my opinions, and we'll look at the bonus features that are included as well. So here's the cover art. I absolutely love this old-fashioned artwork here. It really represents the film pretty well. Here's our spine with the title. Pretty much looks the same as the spine of any Kino video release. That cover's got some pictures and a description of the film. Description of the bonus features, cast listing, and all the other copyright data, and so forth. And now we'll crack open the case. Unfortunately, the inside of this is very bare bones and disappointing. Even the old Shove Factory release at least had a reversible sleeve, which was kind of nice, so you could switch it up a little. I mean, if they even just put some artwork on here or something, it would have been better than what we got. There's the disc itself. If you haven't seen The Producers, the movie revolves around a pair of unlikely protagonists who try to hatch the ultimate scheme to make a bunch of money, which unfortunately backfires. Max Bialystok was once the toast of Broadway with tons of shows running, lots of success, lots of money, but he's fallen on hard times to the point that just to make ends meet and to try to produce more plays, he has to seduce old women. Things take an interesting turn when he meets a meek accountant named Leo Bloom, who, of course, doesn't really care for his own life and is largely in denial, but the two hatch a scheme that involves raising more money than is necessary to put on a play, make the play flop so that the creditors won't audit the books, and then they take the profits and run away. They decide to come up with the worst possible play ever written, the worst actors, and the worst directors. They find the worst play ever written in the form of something called Springtime for Hitler, written by a Nazi in hiding, and they find the most ridiculous director and eccentric actors they find, including a druggy hippie to play Hitler. And just when it looks like everything's going to flop and these two are going to have the most successful scheme of all time, everything backfires and it becomes a surprising, laugh-worthy, comical hit. This movie, of course, was very controversial even if it's at its time of release. Pretty much anything that involves Nazis is going to be controversial to some extent. And this came out only about 20 years after World War II ended, so I mean, you still had Holocaust survivors that were very young at the time. However, this movie in no way glorifies Nazis or Hitler, and in fact does quite the opposite, lampooning them in the absolute best possible way. You also have to keep in mind that this film had a Jewish director and Jewish stars. There are a few dated stereotypes in the film, but honestly, I think that just adds to the charm of it. This film is absolutely hilarious, even 50 plus years after its debut. The performances here from Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder are classics for the ages. These two have a great comic chemistry throughout the movie, and they actually have a decent amount of depth as characters, and this doesn't come at the expense of any of the comedy. Some of the supporting parts are equally hilarious, including Dick Sean playing Lorenzo St. Dubois, or LSD for short, the uh, drugged-up hippie they get to play, Hitler, who is largely responsible for their scheme backfiring. There's a lot that can be said about this film, and I'm not here to go into any super in-depth analysis. It's a great comedy for the ages. Brooks would later adapt this film as a Broadway musical. The musical, of course, would later get its own feature film adaptation, although that was nowhere near as successful or entertaining as the original 1968 film. It's interesting to note that the movie almost didn't get released due to the nature of its source material, but it's largely through the efforts of comedian actor Peter Sellers, who saw a rough print of the movie, that it ended up getting the release it deserved. 50 plus years later, we're still laughing at this movie, and there have been a lot of attempts to lampoon Nazis over the years, and I don't think any film has ever done that better than the producers. This 
release of the film, according to the packaging, is struck from a new 4K master. Disappointingly, it's not a 4K ultra high def disc, it's just a 1080p Blu-ray disc. But I won't deny that this transfer looks gorgeous. In 2018, there was a UK release of the film on Blu-ray that sported a 4K master. I believe this is most likely the same master that was used for that release. I don't own the earlier Shell Factory disc, so I can't do a direct comparison, but this is a very good looking transfer of an older film. It retains all the natural film grain, and while a few of the optic shots and some of the titles and things like that look a little rough, that's just due to the nature of how films were made back then, and that really can't be held against this transfer in particular. If you're asking me if this transfer does the movie justice, if it's worth double dipping on just to get the superior picture quality that this transfer offers, as a longtime fan of the movie, I say yes. As far as bonus features go, you mostly only get stuff that was included with the previous release. The one new feature here being a commentary track from a film historian. I, I gotta look at the guy's name. Michael Schlesinger. I admittedly don't know who that is, but I am glad they included at least one new bonus feature here for people who've already bought the film on one of these formats in recent years. Disappointingly, it doesn't include any of the newer features that were on that 2018 UK release. That had a Q&A with Mel Brooks at the TCM Film Festival hosted by Ben Mankiewicz, which I really wish we'd gotten here, as well as a TV appearance with Zero Mostel and a few other things. What we get here, even if it's mostly previously released, is no slouch. The hour-long making of the producer's documentary is a must-watch for any fan of the film. Mel Brooks, of course, would go on to have a great comedy career. The guy's in his 90s at the time of this review, and he's still alive. Although he hasn't directed a film since 1995's Dracula Dead and Loving It. Although there's no denying the greatness of this man's filmography that includes the likes of movies such as Spaceballs, Blazing Saddles, Robin Hood Men in Tights, History of the World Part 1, Young Frankenstein. The list goes on. Mel Brooks has been making us laugh for decades, and I'm glad to see the guy still alive and kicking. What do you think of the producers? Have you picked up this release? Is it your favorite Mel Brooks film? If it's not, what is? Comment down below and let me know what you think. Also remember to subscribe to this channel for more content. I'm always posting new videos. And give this one a like if you found it helpful or interesting. I'm Taylor T. Carlson. I'll see you next time.